You're listening to Boobies and Newbies, brought to you by the Frolic Podcast Network. Today's podcast is sponsored by Best Women's Erotica of the Year, Volume 5, edited by Rachel Kramer Bustle, published by Cleus Press. This anthology's theme is outrageous and features 21 brand new sexy erotica and erotic romance stories by authors including Sierra Simone, C.D. Reese, Sabrina Soul, Caridad Pinheiro, Bolicar Joswell, Justine Elliott, Alexa J. Day, Jane Raynaud, and more. Get ready to be swept away by the sexiest business deal ever. Break the rules in a future world where skin-on-skin contact is forbidden and discover the art of getting off by phone sex. Um, yes, please. From the mermaid sex I know all of us have been missing, to historical passion, to the first Latina U.S. president finding intimacy again after becoming a widow, this book has something for every reader. From happy endings to pure lust. Best Women's Erotica of the Year, Volume 5, is available in print, ebook, and audiobook, and is on sale now wherever books are sold. Special thanks to Rachel Kramer Bustle for sending me my own copy. I cannot wait to read it. Find out more at bweoftheyear.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to Boobies and Newbies, the podcast that asks novice romance readers to think outside the dick in a box and brave the unbridled world of erotica. I'm your host, Kelly Reynolds, and welcome to 2020, everybody. I am so happy to be back for, believe it or not, a third season of Boobies and Newbies. I swear it feels like it was just a couple weeks ago when we were kicking off season two, and yet here we are. It's January 2020. This is our very first episode of the new season, and it is a sexy spotlight episode. Now, don't fret because our regular Friday reviews begin again next Friday, the very last day of January. And if for some reason you missed it on our social media, our first episode back is going to be another review with one of our favorite guests, Nathan Brown. Nathan and I will be reviewing Hot Shot, the third and final book in Robin Bielman's American Royalty series. Nathan's been on Boobies and Newbies twice before, so he's a little less of a newbie nowadays, but nonetheless, His reviews are some of my very favorite episodes, so if you haven't heard our reviews of the first two books in the American Royalty series, I highly recommend you check them out before the third book drops next week, followed by the third episode. Now that the series is ending, I guess we're just going to have to find something else to read. Believe me, if I had it my way and Nathan had a freer schedule, he would be recording with us full time. I guess I'm just going to have to start a spinoff series in the near future future, Kelly and Nathan take on the world of romance, one Robin Bielman book at a time. But I'm getting too far ahead of myself because that clearly sounds like a goal for 2021. Let's focus on the now and what we have coming up in 2020 here on Boobies and Newbies. So last year at this time in January, for our very first Sexy Spotlight episode, we did sort of a spotlight on what the year before looked like for us, what books we had read during our first season of Boobies and Newbies, some of our favorite guests, some of our most highly rated episodes, and I thought about doing the same thing for our 2019 season. However, I feel like there's been so many wonderful episode and book roundup reviews in the last month that I thought it might be fun to focus more on the year ahead. What can we expect from Boobies and Newbies in 2020, as well as what are some of the books that we absolutely plan on reading and recommending to our listeners? So let's start here. Boobies and Newbies Season 3 2020. What can you expect? Now it's only January, so obviously things are bound to change down the line. However, as of now, the plan is still to release romance review episodes every Friday. 
We will not be releasing Sexy Spotlight episodes every month, however, you will find a few sprinkled here and there. In fact, I know that we've got our first author interview on the lineup for April, my birthday month. And while we do tend to review more contemporary romance, I am going to make a valid effort to review more historical, fantasy, and action-adventure romance this season. I've decided that season three is going to be the season of boobies and newbies that I am also playing the newbie. Just like with any other genre, I feel like as a reader, I've become so set in my ways of what I like to read, the authors I love to read, and I want to change that by exploring new authors, new subgenres, and new books unfamiliar to me. So even though I have a general idea of the episode lineup from now through April, I would still love to hear your recommendations. What would you like to hear us review? Keep in mind that I'd like to focus on books that have been released in the last year or so, or books coming up for 2020 releases. And don't worry, we will talk about those soon. Don't expect too many changes as far as our episode format goes. However, we do have one major change that I did want to share with listeners in this episode. For season three, Rather than reviewing our books based on story, syntax, and sexcapades, three of my absolute favorite things, we're going to focus on heart, humor, and heat. I mean, even though I'm changing it up, what can I say? This girl loves a good alliteration. So why the change, you might be wondering? Here's the thing. All of our reviews are purely subjective. They're based on my and my guests' opinions. In no way do I want to put down any romance author for the work that they're creating. I'm sure as listeners and fellow romance readers, you're bound to have opinions different from my own, as you should. So rather than the quality of the writing itself, because, hey, who am I to decide? that. I'm going to focus on three different categories, all of which are things that I look for in a romance novel, things that make or break my reading experience, if you will. Heart, heat, and humor. When it comes to heart, my guests and I will be reviewing based on those warm, fuzzy feelings that the book gives us. Or doesn't give us. Did we find the romance to be true and honest? Were we satisfied with the amount of romance? Did the main characters earn their happy ending? Were we rooting for our characters to find a happy ending? Plus, how good was that meet cute? Because y'all know, I love a good meet cute. It might sound a little cheesy, but heart is at the heart of a good romance novel. A romance novel can exist without humor or even heat, but a romance novel without heart? Ugh, well that might as well just be a Game of Thrones book, am I right? And then there's the humor. Granted, not every romance novel is going to be laugh out loud hilarious, and that's okay. However, I know that when I'm reading a romance, I always look forward to reading something that's going to make me giggle. I live for the awkwardness of romance and dating, and anyone who is dating in 2020 will tell you how awkward and hilarious it absolutely is. Although I think there's a fine line between hilarious and mortifying. But for that, I recommend my friends at the My Worst Date podcast. I love to laugh. I love to be entertained. And romance novels generally tend to do that, which is why we will be giving a humor rating this season. And then there's the heat. Let's be honest, for a lot of people, it all comes down to the heat rating. And I'm talking about either side of the scale. I've found from speaking with guests as well as listeners that everyone has their own preferences when it comes to the heat level in romance novels. Some people prefer the warm, cozy, fuzzy feelings, while others want straight up shower sex. <laughs> you know who you are. And as far as I see it, there's nothing wrong with either one. So whether or not you prefer a closed door romance or some good old fashioned erotica, we'll be sure to give you our accurate heat rating so that you know when you go into the book what to expect. Other than that, plan for a lot more romance reviews this season. So before we talk about some of our most anticipated 2020 reads, as well as a quick sneak peek as far as what you can expect to hear us reviewing this February, let's talk about goals. New year, new me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it all before. I believe in goal setting and holding yourself accountable for your goals by sharing those goals publicly with others. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm happy to say that I actually did meet several of the goals that I made for season two of Boobies and Newbies as far as listenership and followers go. 
as of the beginning of January 2020, we have over 3,000 Twitter followers, 1,400 Instagram followers, and get ready for this, 50,000 episode downloads. Now, I know that might not seem like a lot compared to some of your other favorite podcasts, but then again, I was never in it for the downloads. Boobies and Newbies from the very beginning has always been a fun way to share my love for romance with the world. When I started the podcast in 2018, I never expected that it would come this far nor turn into what it's become. And I mean that in the best way possible. Excuse me while I humble brag. In 2019, we joined the Frolic Podcast Network, we met our statistics goals, and we had our very first live show with our gals from my worst date. Overall, I'm a happy camper, and I want to thank all of you for listening because you are a major part of me meeting my goals. So what are my goals for 2020 as far as boobies and newbies go? Well, I can tell you one thing. I definitely plan on being a lot more active on our Patreon page. By the way, I can think of no better time to thank our fabulous January patrons for all of their wonderful support. Please excuse me if I get anyone's name wrong. Y'all know how fucked up I am when it comes to names. Becky Feldman, Catherine Crone, Deconstructing Damsels, Jeff Day, Jocelyn Fowler, Marlene Cordoso, Michelle Jace, My Worst State, Natalie Medved, Stephanie Callis, and Tristan Lamb. Thank you all so much for supporting Boobies and Newbies. Many of you have been patrons for months, and I'm so thankful that you've continued to support this ridiculous and fun adventure of mine. Like I mentioned before, I do plan on trying to read new authors and genres. So again, if anybody's got recommendations you know who to call. I'd also love nothing more than to have another live show this season. After all, the first one was an absolute blast. Another goal of mine is to share my reviews on both Goodreads and our social media. That's right, I've officially made it to Goodreads. I've also created boards to showcase the books that we read in season one and two, as well as the books that we'll be reading for season three. I promise to do my best to keep those updated. I'll also be sharing our heart, humor, and heat ratings for every episode on our social media accounts. So you can have an idea of what to expect from each book before you even listen to the episode. But enough about goals. Let's talk about the books, namely what you can expect in the upcoming months. Now, of course, I'm not going to give away our entire episode lineup because what fun would that be? However, I am pleased to say that for the month of February, you can expect us to celebrate Black History Month by reading four romance novels centered around characters of color written by African-American women, even though it might not show. And even though we still have a long ways to go, there is an abundance of diversity within the romance writing community. I am so honored to be able to highlight that diversity in our February reading schedule. I can tell you that we've definitely got an Alyssa Cole book on the list, as well as a Rebecca Weatherspoon. However, the other half of the February books are by authors less familiar to me, and I'm so excited to give some new authors a go. If you absolutely cannot stand the anticipation and you want to find out our February reading schedule before anybody else, you can follow and support us on Patreon. Our Patreon patrons get early access to all of our upcoming titles. Damn, Patreon patrons, Patreon patrons. Say that five times fast. So now's the moment that I know I've been waiting for, and that's to share some of my most anticipated romance reads for 2020. Now, these are romance novels that have not been released, but will be in the year 2020. And while, of course, there's bound to be tons of releases in the year 2020, I'm going to highlight just a few that I know that I am eagerly anticipating the release of. Starting with Love According to Science by Claire Kingsley. Okay, clearly I'm a little biased because, of course, I love Claire's work. We have reviewed two of Claire's previous books on this podcast, starting with Faking Miss Wright, followed by the first episode in our Blue Water Billionaires book club series, which detailed Claire's book, The Mogul and the Muscle. In my opinion, Claire Kingsley is a must-read author, especially if you love contemporary romance. 
I challenge you to find a Claire Kingsley book that you do not love. Hell, I challenge you to find a Claire Kingsley book that I don't love. To date, I've probably read at least 10 Claire Kingsley books, including the books she's written with Lucy Score, whom I also adore. And I have yet to be unamused. Time and time again, I fall in love with Claire's characters, their hilarious conversations, and surprise, surprise, super hot sex. Now, Love According to Science is the second book in Claire's Dirty Martini Running Club series. During season two of Boobies and Newbies, we read book one in the series, Faking Miss Wright. Now, I was lucky enough to score an advanced reader's copy of Love According to Science, so I can tell you with full certainty that this book is a must read, even if you missed Faking Miss Wright, though I definitely recommend you back it on up and either read that book or listen to our review. What's not to love about two sexy scientists falling in love? Hot nerdy hero, hate lust with his sworn enemy, a heroine with book smarts, and a fluffy cat named Irwin. I mean, cue awkwardness and geeky banter. Who doesn't love some good hot hate sex? Now, I might have gotten an early copy of this book, but by the time this episode drops, you could also be reading Love According to Science, which releases January 23rd. While we won't be reviewing this one for the podcast, I absolutely recommend checking it out as well as diving into the deep backlog of anything Claire Kingsley. Okay, now let's take it back. And by back, I mean like a few hundred years. Whether you prefer contemporary romance or historical romance, you must read Lisa Kleipas. Every genre has an almighty. And for romance, at least for me, it's Lisa. Bless you. Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Kleipas drops February 18th. It is the sixth book in Lisa's The Ravenel series. In Chasing Cassandra, Lady Cassandra Ravenel is pursued by Tom Severin, a cold and wealthy businessman. Ooh, I love it already. Yes, I know it's 2020 and feminism and all that, but Oh, I do love a good chasing after a heroine book. Plus, the book cover is giving me full-on Cinderella live action vibes, and I am here for her dress. And hair, for that matter. This girl has got locks. I've been reading Lisa Kleipas almost as long as I've been reading romance, and the beauty of her work is that whether or not you stick with a series from start to finish or come into it six books in, you are guaranteed to love her work. So you better believe that I'll be picking up a copy of Chasing Cassandra come February 18th. Happy Valentine's Day to me. Okay, now the next two books on the list are a little bit different, but I'm noticing a new trend in romance, and I have to say I'm kind of here for it. Undercover Bromance by Lissa K. Adams, as well as Real Men Knit by Kwana Jackson, both focus more on male protagonists. And while that might sound a little odd at first considering the genre, I have to say I'm really invested in reading more about male protagonists. Undercover Bromance is the second book of the Bromance Book Club series. Book one was a huge hit in 2019, and this one focuses on Nashville chef Liv, who's fired from her dream job after discovering her celebrity boss harassing a young hostess. Hashtag me too, girlfriend. She's determined to take him down and grudgingly accepts the help of the irresistibly charming nightclub owner, Brayden Mack. Undercover Bromance releases March 10th, and yes, I know it is another contemporary romance, but what can I say? I have a type. You'll have to wait a little bit longer for Real Men Knit by Kiwana Jackson, which comes out May 19th. I'm excited to say that I did reach out to Kiwana about an advanced reader copy for Real Men Knit, and it's looking pretty good. So you can probably expect a romance review for boobies and newbies. Real Men Knit actually has a very sad start to it. After his mother's unexpected death, Jesse, along with his three brothers, clash over what to do with her Harlem knitting shop. As he fights to keep the store open, part-time employee Carrie, who of course has always harbored a secret crush on him, offers to help Jesse save the business. I have to tell you, I'm a little displeased that I haven't had more men knitting in romance novels in my life, with the exception of one of my early 2000s favorite romance series by Heidi Betts, which I definitely recommend checking out, starting with the book Tangled Up in Love. You know when it's recommended by Lori Foster, Carly Phillips, and Lisa Kleipas, 
that you've got something good in store. I only hope Real Men Knit measures up. Last on my list of most anticipated reads for 2020 is The Boyfriend Project by Farah Roshan. Again, I'm terrible with names. I hope it's Roshan and not Rochan. Apologies either way, Farah. I'm not familiar with Farah's books, so this is a new author to me. But the title, book cover, and promo by BuzzFeed just scream, Kelly, read me. In The Boyfriend Project, Samaya finds out that she was catfished and cheated on by her ex. She makes a pact to ward off love, as, you know, so many of us do and focus on herself by developing her dream app. But her new coworker, Daniel, makes that difficult. Does he make it difficult, Samaya, or does he make it hard? I gotta say, what with me binging The Circle on Netflix and formerly working in reality television, I'm a sucker for anything related to social media and romance. It gives me hope, you know, for finding my husband on Instagram. If only. The Boyfriend Project by Farah Rashan releases June 9th. Now, obviously, I've got a lot more books on my TBR list for 2020. Party of Two by Jasmine Guillory. Take a Hint, Danny Brown by my girl Talia Hibbert. And of course, Daring and the Duke by Sarah McLean. But like I said, this is a sexy spotlight episode. And like my friends Sarah Smith and Sky McDonald's podcast, it is meant to be quick and dirty. I sense a part two to this sexy spotlight series in the near future. That being said, I'd like to welcome you all back to another season of Boobies and Newbies and what will hopefully be another fabulous year. If you've got a book that you want us to read for the podcast, reach out to me via email or social media. My ears are open and my finger is ready to one click buy whatever recommendation you've got for me. In the meantime, it's back to Robin Bielman's hot shot for me. Thanks so much for listening and look out for that first romance review next week. I know y'all can't wait to fall in love with Nathan's sexy voice again. <sighs> He's so dreamy. Hashtag audio porn much? so much for listening. Boobies and Newbies is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow Boobies and Newbies on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Boobies Podcast.